Hi guys, Judith from the Vegan Vegetarian Foodie Network and today we are going to ferment eggs and meat and I'm going to tell you why you might want to ferment eggs and meat and all the different things that you can do with it. So come and I'll show you. When you're doing eggs it just doesn't matter what eggs you use. These are organic free-range uh, chicken eggs but you can use duck eggs, quail eggs, partridge eggs, turkey eggs, ostrich eggs, emu eggs, you name it, any kind of egg. And the idea is you want to boil them first. So I have boiled these and I've taken off the shells. These are quite cool to touch now. The very basic recipe for fermented eggs, plop them in a jar, really simple as many as will fit. So this is a one quart jar. I haven't counted. Three, six, nine, that's 10, 11. So 11 eggs fits quite comfortably if I was, yep, there you go. A dozen eggs will fit into a wide mouth uh, quart jar. So two, four, six, eight, ten. Yep, exactly a dozen. And very simple. I personally prefer basil and oregano and garlic. So I'm going to add for this quart a tablespoon of pickling salt. Any kind of non iodized salt will do. I'm going to add approximately a teaspoon of basil and I like oregano so a good heaping tablespoon of oregano. You may wish to adjust these seasonings but I think you'll find if you follow this recipe you will truly enjoy it. And then fill it with some good quality water. So I have some artesian spring water here. I have to add my garlic so I don't want to fill it up too too much just yet. It doesn't matter how you're, you put your garlic in whether it's whole or chopped. I've decided to chop this and um, for those of you wondering these are extra large eggs that I have in here so a dozen extra large organic free-range chicken eggs. I have put in about four garlic cloves in addition to the spices and the salt. That's it. That's as simple as it gets. Now if you want to put black pepper in there you can as well but I find this recipe right here makes an incredibly delicious fermented egg. These don't sit out in the counter. Put them in your fridge and leave them in your fridge for up to oh I'd say probably up to about four to six months. What happens eventually is um, they ferment so much that they, because they're fat and protein and because for fermenting breaks down fats and proteins, your eggs might get a little bit mushy after that. They're still quite edible. Um, if they get mushy, then what you want to do is make a fermented egg salad with it. Okay, so I have right here spicy fermented egg salad I want to show you. So what I did is I had eggs in the fridge that had been sitting for about um, probably four to six months and they were starting to get a little mushy so all I did is I added some fermented, if you go on to my recipe uh, playlist under basic um, recipes you'll find a recipe to ferment uh, hot peppers, any kind of hot peppers. What I do with those hot peppers is I will eat them as they are in slices or whole or I'll put them through a food processor and I will make uh, a sauce such as this. So this is homemade fermented, can you see that? There's chunks of red hot peppers in there. So this is a combination, mm -mm. this is a combination of um, scotch bonnets, habaneros, red finger chili peppers, Thai chili, uh, red Thai chili, uh, sorry, red Thai peppers, uh, jalapenos, 
it's just a beautiful combination. I think I even have some uh, yellow hot banana peppers in here. So I mix a variety and then I will make it into a paste. I also make my own, I'm not going to do that in this recipe, I'll show you in another uh, video for that. I make my own homemade fermented mayonnaise, which this particular recipe has. So what I do is I take fermented homemade mayonnaise, I add some red hot pepper sauce to it, I add some chopped, fresh chopped garlic, or I will take the garlic from this jar and add it to this and mash it up and make a fermented egg salad. And so you can see the chunks of egg. There's yolk in there and white. And I eat this. If you eat bread, you can eat it on a sandwich. If you don't eat bread and you eat um, vegetable wraps, flat wraps instead, uh, you can eat it on that. You can wrap it in lettuce and have it as a lettuce wrap. Um, you can top this over a baked potato. Make sure your baked potato is not super piping hot. And that will add as a protein and a fat. Um, you can have it in a salad, actually mix it up in a salad. And instead of mushing it so fine, you can literally just chop it into chunks and add that to uh, any type of salad. This is incredible too, by the way, for those of you who love mashed potatoes in the summer with eggs, instead of using um, unfermented whole eggs, take your fermented eggs, or if you've made a fermented egg salad, and mix it in with some cooked egg, uh, freshly cooked uh, potatoes. And if you want the potatoes to ferment a bit, then leave it in the fridge for about three to seven days and it will start to ferment out the starches um, and the sugars from your potatoes, especially those of you who are on paleo diets or ketosis diets or low carb diets. It's an excellent way whether you use squash, sweet potato, yam, or any of the varieties of potatoes, you can add a fermented egg salad to those potatoes and make a, a fermented egg, uh, potato egg salad and it's absolutely delicious, especially in the summer. And the beautiful thing about it is if you're outdoors, you know, in those hot summer days, you don't have to worry about your food going bad. <laughs> it's just going to ferment a little more out in the heat, right? So that's incredible. So there's some ideas. These would make an excellent snack just like this when they're fermented. Um, if you're not into having such a big egg, that's why I mentioned the quail eggs. Quail eggs do have a lot more um, fat than they do protein. The cholesterol in quail eggs does not affect your body the same way that uh, the cholesterol in other eggs does. But the nice thing about it, in fact, it's a, it actually contributes to um, the good uh, cholesterol, which I believe is your HDL as opposed to your LDL. However, fermenting it breaks down the fats and the proteins. So just remember that. So, uh, and makes it, so let's go back now. Why would you even want to ferment eggs, right? For those of you that uh, especially are over 50 or anyone with low stomach acid, you do not have the acids in your stomach to properly digest fats and proteins. And that's why fermenting, whether you just slightly ferment it or you let it ferment for quite some time, that's why fermented eggs and meat are better for your body. So I want you to think about it in terms of vibration. Eggs and meat, when they're cooked, are dead foods. There's not a lot of vibration to it, not a lot of life in those foods. But the moment you ferment a food, you increase its vibration, which means you create life in a dead. It's kind of like Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead type thing. You're raising something dead to a higher vibration, to something more life-affirming, life-enhancing. And because it's a probiotic, it works wonders for your stomach, right? And for your whole digestive tract. And then you start working on healing your digestive tract or raising the frequency of uh, your digestive tract and you have better brain health as a result. So that's, um, for me, one of the fundamental reasons why I ferment eggs and meat. And I'll show you some meat in a minute. 
So um, it basically takes a dead vibration, a um, lifeless vibration or a dead uh, food and gives it life. It breathes life into it. But it also, if you have low stomach acid, just makes it so much more easier to digest. How many of you out there that eat meat, you'll have a large protein meal and then the first thing you want to do is just go have a nap, right? Because it's, there's so much dead matter in cooked meat that your body has to, digestive takes up the most amount of energy of anything you'll ever do in life. You can run a, a, a full marathon and it still doesn't require the same amount of energy as digesting, in particular, meats and fats. So digestion takes up the, the bulk of your energy in life. And if you can make that easier on your body, then you have more energy for other things in your life. I mean, seriously, how many of you want to sit down, lay down, sorry, for a two, four hour nap in the afternoon when maybe a 20 minute nap might be all that you need and now suddenly you have four extra hours of uptime that you can do other things that you enjoy, right? I'm not saying rest is not important by all means. I'm just saying rest as a result of overtaxing your digestive system, <laughs> okay? All right, so let's go back to the eggs before I go to the meat. All right, these are glass noodles. Um, and I just cooked these up the other day. What are glass noodles? Well, these particular glass noodles are made with um, flour from sweet potatoes. You might know glass noodles as vermicelli rice. So it can be made from rice, sweet potatoes, yams, etc. The reason why I prefer glass noodles over any other noodles is because typically they tend to be made um, with, like I said, a vegetable or with rice, which is easier to digest in your, in your uh, digestive tract. But also because they hold their texture when they're fermented and they're absolutely delicious. They kind of remind me of tofu that they take on the flavor of whatever it is that you marinate them with or cook them with. So I've done up, this is about a half a gallon, I guess. Uh, so that's four, this is about six or eight cups of these uh, beautiful broad gl uh, glass noodles. And I took a jar of um, fermented sauerkraut that I had in the back room, as well as um, a jar of, it. it's what I call broccoli slaw. It had broccoli, um, uh, what do you call those things, baby Brussels sprouts, um, broccoli stems, cauliflower stems, and I had added turmeric and ginger and garlic and celery to it. And I took all the juices and the vegetables, and I have a, a full gallon of this also on the go. And I took all these noodles, and I'm now marinating them in this. And again, anyone who's on ketosis or paleo or low carb, this is something you might wish to do. You can do this with regular pastas, regular rice, etc. Like I said, the reason why I like the glass noodles is they hold their texture. They don't go mushy like rice and regular pasta does. So you can, this is just going to be um, a uh, kind of like a vegetable carb, add as a, a meat alternative for those of you who are vegetarians and meat eaters, you can add um, as uh, meat your fermented egg. And so you have a fully fermented meal now, right? So you can even add your eggs to this, unchopped whole eggs, to this to ferment it as opposed to putting it in the salt, garlic, spice, water, brine. Just make sure that if you put eggs, the whole eggs into this, that you leave space in here to ferment the eggs. And so essentially the eggs will ferment at the same time that your noodles do. Okay, what's another thing that you can do with this? You can add cooked hamburger, chicken, lamb, goat, any kind of meat, beef, venison, elk, whatever you want, whatever meat, for those of you who are meat eaters, okay? 
You can even add fish to this for pescherians. You can add cooked meat directly into this and ferment it and you have a full meal in a, in a jar. Now, even though I'm not dedicating this video to Shirley, Shirley has been asking me um, to provide videos like this. She's currently out on the road a lot. Um, I get that. I spent four and a half months living out of my car when I traveled across Canada and the States with my husband Dom. And the only thing we took with us was a little Bunsen burner. And I made everything in the car or on the good days uh, when we were in, you know, warmer states. Um, I would basically prepare everything in the car or on outdoors on that little Bunsen burner. And so we had to take foods that uh, wouldn't spoil. Uh, so I got um, very accustomed to knowing how to create food for the road and how to live on the road. When I returned a few years later, I then did uh, a few years of driving school buses and transit buses and coach buses and door-to-door, uh, -door, hand to hand special needs drivers and community buses. And you don't get breaks with that. Um, you're, you're lucky if you get a pee break, essentially. And I'd be driving for anywhere from, you know, 8 to 14 hours a day. And so again, I had to know how to take food that wouldn't spoil, that would be life affirming, that would be filling without making me tired because the last thing you want when you're driving um, for long hours is to be tired. You don't want to be falling asleep behind the wheel. And so something like this, add some meat to it, um, cooked meat, and let it ferment, what, regardless of what that meat is, like I said, whether it's chicken or red meat, pork, um, fish, whatever, um, add it to this fermented and you have a full meal in a jar. You have your fermented vegetables, you have a fermented pasta, and you have your fermented meat. So let's now talk about meat. Here I have this is uh, organic grass-fed um, beef, and this is, um, oh, I forget the name of the cow, it's, it's one of the little short guys. It's got, it's short and it's got kind of longish hair, it reminds me of the Scottish cows. Anyway, it's very gamey, okay, but you can use any kind of um, ground beef in this. Now I've added pumpkin seeds and fenugreek. So do you guys remember uh, my super fiber blend? If you haven't yet seen that, go watch the video. Um, I took my super fiber blend and I added ground beef to it. So you can see there's chunks of meat in here, right? That's a, a chunk of meat there. It's another chunk. They're not major chunks of meat, just small. And I mixed it all up. So this is high, um, high fi sorry, high fiber and lots of protein uh, with some fat because it has the fenugreek, the flax seed, it has um, pumpkin seeds, and I believe I added again a kraut base to this for a vegetable. This has been in my fridge uh, probably for about three months. This is the beauty about meat when you ferment it, it lasts anywhere from six to nine months in your fridge. Show me meat that you can cook unfermented and leave it in your fridge for six to nine months and come back and eat it and it still be life affirming and not spoiled and doesn't give you food poisoning. That's what I love about fermented meat. So that's one recipe. I'm actually I have um, organic chicken and turkey on the go right now. I'm going to strip the meat off. I'm cooking this in a slow cooker. I'm going to strip the meat off that. And um, I made, do you guys remember my beans? The green and yellow wax beans that I made. Um, so what I did is I took the beans and I put them through a food processor. Let me get them for you. 
Even though I ferment things, it doesn't mean that I eat the, the fermented food exactly as I created it. Sometimes I get the jar and I revamp it. So these were the long beans and the short beans. I put them through the food processor and I made this almost like a relish. It's a fermented bean relish. It's absolutely, oh my gosh, it's absolutely delicious. And I'm going to, once the chicken is cooked, fully cooked, I will shred it and I will add to the beans. And again, that's going to be a meal. So see what I'm doing? I am creating meals because I'm going to have a very busy summer. Like a lot of you, I don't think I want to be in the kitchen cooking a lot. And I want to have ready access fast food that is extremely healthy, extremely life, uh, extremely life enhancing, high vibrational foods that add to the optimal of my health and don't take away from my health. So I will add that chicken to this and I'll probably make up a couple of these quart jars. Here I have some stewing meat, and I had, do you guys remember these uh, fermented zucchini recipe that I gave you? Okay, so what I did is I took the stewing meat, again, I cook everything in the slow cooker so that it's nice and tender, and I chopped this up in really small chunks, and I added it to a jar of fermented zucchini. So I'm just going to throw this in the fridge. All of these meats have to go in the fridge, okay? Same with your eggs. So I will put this in the fridge because I just made this uh, this morning. Um, I will put this in the fridge for the next couple months and forget all about it. And then, because I have a long fast coming up, when I'm done my fast, this will be ready for me. And see, this is a beautiful thing because anybody who does fasting, you know that the last thing you put into your body is meat and fat after a long fast. So for those of you who do Ramadan or any uh, religious fast, maybe you do Lent or maybe you just do for your own spiritual practices. I do it for spirituality and for uh, health reasons. Um, I've been fasting since I was a kid. So <clears throat> because it's fermented, you can eat it a lot sooner. Now, somebody like me with anemia, you want to ferment your, your meat, at least slightly. Because when you ferment it, and anyone who, again, who's over 50, actually even over 40, you start losing hormones around the age of 30. You lose a whole bunch more when you're 40, and by the time you're 50, you have, you're operating on half the hormones that you did when you were 30, okay? So a lot of the hormones are made in your stomach. And hormones, in my opinion, and I hope that science one day will prove this if they haven't already, um, hormones uh, a lot of times get lost because of vitamin and mineral defici deficiencies and because of poor gut health. So low stomach acid is part of it, right? When you ferment your meat, first of all, you know that fermenting makes all the nutrients in anything that is fermented more bioavailable. In other words, it's easier to digest and assimilate the nutrients of that food when it is fermented. Same thing applies with meat. So meat is the only um, food source that will literally help the body to create hormones. And sometimes it, yeah, it's the only, and sometimes it's the only food with complete amino acids other than quinoa. Quinoa is a full spectrum amino acid. And if you go into blending rice and beans, then you get a full spectrum amino acid. So a lot of times your body is lacking hormones and amino acids and low stomach acid. And that's why your body starts becoming deficient in hormones. So when you eat meat on its own, um, if you already have low stomach acid, Again, like I said, you're making your body work super, super hard, but it's also not absorbing properly because you're lacking the, the um, sufficient amino uh, digestive acids in your stomach to be able to break down those foods. So when you ferment the meat, you do so many things all at once. You make the nutrients of the meat more bioavailable. You, in doing that, your body now has greater access to the amino acids 
and the hormone, uh, yeah, the amino acids that it then converts into hormones in your stomach. Um, and remember I said stomach is linked to brain? When, you, when your stomach is working optimally, your pituitary and your pineal gland are working optimally and those are part of your hormones, right? So is your endocrine system, uh, your sexual reproductive system, I should say. It's part of your hormones. So it all starts in your gut, guys. So for those of you who have been turning your nose up, if you've been watching this, if you eat meat and think this woman's crazy, like why would you ferment meat? It's gonna be sour and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, it does change the, the flavor of the meat a bit. I'm not gonna lie, it does. But it also takes on the flavor. That's why I like to mix it with the vegetable. It takes on the flavor of the vegetable. And so it's really quite delicious. You still get a meat flavor, but it takes on the flavor of the fermented vegetable. Um, okay, I hope I've answered that, why you would want to ferment meat. Here's another one that I just made. This is lamb and goat, uh, organic lamb, organic goat, and organic uh, beef stewing meat. Again, I cooked it in the slow cooker. I shredded it, and I added it... Um, this one I added to kraut with, again, turmeric and ginger. Uh, and again, I will leave this, I just made this, I will leave this in the fridge for a few months and I will come back and eat it. And um, like I said, coming off a fast, I can eat these two foods a lot faster than if I was just eating meat that was cooked. And why would I pers personally want to do that? Because like I said, for issues of anemia, meat is rich in iron and when it's fermented my body will just suck all that up right so for me that's incredibly beneficial a final note about um, another reason why you would want to eat your meats and your eggs fermented anyone that's watched my uh, anti-parasitic diet cleanse video um, the most parasites that you will get in your body, I mean, they come from everywhere. They come from if you, I tend to, with my bare hands, garden. I don't wear gloves. So you can get parasites if you have, see, I have a little cut there. I don't know if you can see that. I can get parasites in that, and then they come into my body just by having my hands in the dirt. If you have cats and you don't clean the kitty litter with gloves, uh, or a mask. You can breathe in and or again get parasites into cuts on your hands. Um, you can get it from, obviously, you know, if you go to third world countries in the water. Uh, but even in multicultural cities, major metropolises in first world countries, um, not everybody has the same hygiene practices. And so you can just go to a, an ethnic restaurant and end up getting parasites um, from improperly cooked food or somebody that doesn't clean their hands properly and then does food handling. There's so many ways to get parasites. But the greatest amount of parasites for the average uh, person um, does tend to come from animal products, right? So uh, pork has the highest parasites of all animal meats. And that's why it's another incredible Benefic, uh, benefit for fermenting your eggs and your dairy and your meats is because parasites cannot live in fermented foods. It kills them because it's too oxygen rich. Um, so, you know, whatever you don't kill from cooking, guaranteed you'll kill it when you ferment it. So just yet another really good reason for anyone that uh, is concerned about parasites uh, and how to clean up uh, your body. Maybe you want to continue eating meat and or if you're a vegetarian, eggs and fish after you've done an anti-parasitic diet cleanse. But you know, if you're just going to eat regular eggs and meat and fish, you might be bringing those back into your body. So this is another great way um, to keep yourself at an optimal health where you don't invite in more parasites. Okay, I think I've covered on everything that I want to cover today. So there's your different meats, even some noodles, some eggs, fermented egg salad, 
If you guys have any questions, I would love to hear them and um, try to respond to them through the messages that, you know, how we communicate in the messages below. Uh, and if you're looking for a very specific video on how to ferment a very particular food, uh, let me know and um, we'll get creative together and see what we can create. But for now, Shirley, I hope this has helped you uh, or anybody who's out in the road, especially truck drivers. If any of you are truck drivers or construction workers, you're out in the heat all day and um, or you're just out in the road all day, salespeople who are out in the roads all day. It's a really good way, uh, or soccer moms, you know, and, and uh, hockey mom and dads, where you're just, you're out constantly. Uh, it's easy to grab something um, from a fast food chain, uh, but a whole lot better for you if you make it yourself and take it. No shame in taking a brown paper bag or a lunch box or a cooler bag, uh, because you're contributing to your health. And your wealth is in your health. Your health is, <laughs> without health, go out and try to make money. Go out and try to create and generate money without health. So your wealth is in your health. And these foods will help you get there. So I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. And until I see you in the next video, ciao for now.